Uh, so we just want to add a few things associated with the uh, the fascia system, and then to uh, to bring it home then the third uh, the third fascia system, the abdominal uh, fascia system. And again, and I think that I want to come back to what I mentioned earlier in the morning. The exercise prescription, I believe, is trying to take elements of the thoracolumbar fascia system with dynamic exercises, and elements of the fascia system, dynamic exercises, and now elements of the abdominal fascia system, and that's sort of the training process, if you will, for, you know, trying to enhance uh, stability of the, uh, of the spine. So this is the abdominal fascia system, and just like the other system, I'm going to just try to present it sort of the exact same way. We have muscles that are attached to the abdominal fascia system, and we have muscles that are encased within. So we've got primarily the external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominus, and also the pec major. And if we point that out, we'll just this a little bit. And then you'll see also um, the other great big shoulder muscle, the serratus anterior, to see how it's related to these abdominal muscles as well. And it's, it's part of this linkage part. I mean, again, like the thoracolumbar lumbar fascia, there's an enormous apron on the front. You don't really have your oblique muscles. They're way out there to the side. You know, they're about right here. They don't, they don't come to the, to the front of the body. It's really the fascial network that makes up the front of the body. And here's your pec major on the, on the cadaver's left, pec major on the cadaver's right. And so just like with the left, you've got this northwest, northwest, northeast type of pull. So that's the whole lower, sur the, the whole lower border of the pecs are tied into the abdominal fascia system. That's why when you see, you know, I think one of the reasons, and I'll show you this with the serratus anterior as well, when, when you ask people whose business in, in life is, is, is strength and training and bodybuilding and, and, and that type of thing, from, from bodybuilding to heavy lifting to competitive lifting, you ask them how they train, the, how they train their abdominal muscles, typically you hear them talking about bringing the shoulder curve. They're doing things pushing down and across. They're doing things pushing up and across like so because they, they, they sort of learn that they need to bring the shoulder girdle in for this element in right here. So a lot of these pullover type things and that, they incorporate this very strong shoulder girdle uh, motion. We sort of even train this whole abdominal mechanism, not just the oblique muscles, but they look, they, they intuitively, I must have done that, didn't know. How many times have I done Okay, there we go. They intuitively, you know, try, have tried to sort of uh, understand this whole mechanism of, train, of, of strengthening uh, the, uh, the anterior part of their, um, uh, of their chest. Now, this is the external oblique here, so I'll, I'll, I'll go to the oblique muscles uh, one by one. The external oblique is coming from the ribs, and then it tie, comes down here and attaches to the iliac crest, and primarily then is attached to this whole lateral border whole lateral border of this abdominal fascia network. So here's your external oblique coming down the pipe right here. The iliac crest would be about right here. And then this is the lateral aspect of this fascia system. So the action of the external oblique, you know, if you, if you, if you look at this, this, uh, the artist's interpretation of the, um, of the, um, of the dissection, is, is first and foremost to cinch this fascia back like this. I mean, so it, it pulls the, that, that network of fascia back like this. That's what brings the abdominal content up against the spine. Okay, that's, that's one element there. Obviously, because of the fiber direction, we've got a posterior rotary moment in the pelvis. We've also got the ability to bring the ribs down toward the pelvis. So the actions, just by visualizing the muscle, you can, you, can, you can sort of determine what the actions are, but an often unappreciated function is this cinching up or tightening of the abdominal fascia. Now, staying with the external oblique for a second, this is another dissection. The head is down at this end over here, and the feet are down at this end over here, the cadaver supine. Uh, this, is, this is the pec major on the cadaver right. Here's your abdominal fascia here. What's always interesting in, in uh, dissecting the abdominal wall is you see, here's the external oblique that we just talked about in the last slide right here. And it comes in and attaches right to this whole lateral aspect of the abdominal fascia. And I'm going to go backwards a second. You'll notice that when you look at the, the um, external oblique, you see these serrated edges right there. And what that interdigitates with and connects with it is the serratus anterior. So here's the serratus anterior. And I dissected this, sort of clean it out a little bit so you can see the serratus anterior 
coming here. And you, you, you look at anatomy texts, they, always, they, they often talk about the, the diffusion the, of the of the serratus anterior with the external oblique, um, the inner digitations coming uh, coming right together. I mean, a real, again, <coughs> you're looking at two very powerful shoulder muscles, the serratus anterior and the uh, and the pectoralis major, again, one of those strong protractors of the uh, of the uh, scapula, um, but it's linkage here with the uh, external oblique. I'm going to come back to that just a little bit later to tie that together a little bit more, but I want to just point it out here in the superficial part of the dissect. Now, if I'll go back here in case you get a chance to do this uh, if you're in a cadaver lens. So then, with here's the external oblique. Now, this is pretty easy to do. Look, if you cut the external oblique off of the ribs right here and reflect it back like this, I think that's, that's a much better way to study. Then what happens is you expose the internal oblique. So this part right here that's sort of folded, you, you can see you're looking at the undersurface of something, that's the external oblique. So I, this, was, this was back here, <coughs> and I just cut it off the ribs, reflected it back, and there's the internal oblique right here. And now, and this is the artist's interpretation again of that. Now, the, the internal oblique starts to get interesting because the internal oblique is attached back here at the thoracal lumbar fascia, and it's attached over here at the abdominal fascia. So it, it, it really is, again, cinching up this posterior fascial network and this anterior fascial network as well, in addition to it, its uh, attachments to the ribs and, and the pelvis. I think the interesting thing about this, when you look at the cross-sectional area, I did a presentation uh, on this in, in a paper on just the cross-sectional area, the external oblique, internal oblique, and transverse abdominis um, several years ago. It's this muscle that has the biggest cross-section. It's the thickest of all of the, of the oblique um, and transverse uh, muscles. And I think the reason for that is when you look at this orientation here, and then you look at activities that we do, and I put a runner in there, you see what... what um, the one of the one of the forces over the pelvis is is really to bring that pelvis up and forward. And people who have taken long-term PNF uh, you know courses and studied that, I think you always remember about that. You know, trying to get the pelvis to come up and forward. You know, with uh, resisted gait and uh, whether you're working with patients with CVAs or, or patients with back pain, but to strengthen the internal oblique, the the concept was always you know try to push the pelvis down to quick stretch it so that the patient elevates it and brings it forward. And so the motor was, was uh, or, or as uh, you know, was mentioned yesterday, the powerhouse was through that, uh, that pelvis. And it, made, it seems to make very good anatomical sense. And, and I think because of its influence then on gait and influence on activity, I think that's why it, it probably has a bigger cross-section because of this force that's applying through the, um, through the, uh, Abdominal uh, uh, to the, uh, the pelvis. So, you know, when you talk about training, you know, then the treadmill running and treadmill walking and, and that treadmill incline, even if it's walking, is in a way an abdominal exercise because you're, you're trying to get the person to bring the pelvis up and forward as opposed to just swinging, swinging the leg. And then um, from this point, okay, you see the transverse abdominal, it's, it's quite easy if you do it like this. There's the attachment of the internal oblique, you can cut, uh, cut the internal oblique off of the rib and then cut it off of the, uh, cut it, detach it from its thoracal lumbar fascia, which is right on the side, detach it from the pelvis, fold it back, and then that exposes the transverse abdominal. So that's what I did here, is I just took the internal